Now that we've finished our pre-repair checks, we're going to begin by removing the display assembly. Hey Hans, I'm ready. Uh, what's going on here? You know what's going on here. But I'm supposed to be doing the iPod Touch 4th generation display assembly video. Nah, it's been a long time coming, and you know it. Not today. In this iCrack video, we're going to go over how to replace the display assembly on an iPod Touch 4th generation. Included in your kit will be a tool kit. The only tools we need out of this kit is a pry tool, a Phillips screwdriver, the guitar pick, and the suction cup. Some other items you're going to need will be a hot air gun or a hair dryer to be able to heat up the glass and loosen the adhesive that's holding it to the mid plate. Some other items that I would suggest would be an iSESMO tool, which is a rather inexpensive tool, and this will greatly aid in the repair of this item. And the iCracked part chart, which is a breakdown of the device showing you where to place all the parts and screws included on a magnetic base. Now, both the iSESMO and the part chart is available for sale on the iCracked.com website. So one of the first things we always do with our repairs is verify that everything on the device functions prior to opening it up. On the iPod Touch 4th generation, one thing we really want to make sure is that your frame, the metal frame, is in relatively good condition. If you have any dents, dings, or wrinkles along the top edge, the new display assembly is not going to sit inside the frame and you may want to consider mailing it in and having us go ahead and repair it as well as replace your frame. So what we're going to do is verify that the display works. We have a picture. We want to uh, go ahead and make sure the digitizer works by grabbing an icon until they're all shaky dragging the icon all over. If the icon drops, that can indicate a problem with the digitizer or with the logic board itself. You want to double tap the home button, the screen should pop up. And the most important is make sure the device is charging. Now the iPod touches will only give you a battery charge indicator. They do not indicate actual battery percentage. So what we're going to do is when we connect is make sure we get that audible alert to let us know that the loudspeaker is working. And on the upper right corner, you'll get a white battery with a charge symbol in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and now test to make sure both the front and the rear camera are functioning by opening the rear flip into the front. We want to make sure that the microphone is also working by putting it in video mode and making us a little recording. Test one, two, three, three, two, one. We'll go ahead and play back that video. One, two, three, three, two, one. And at the same time that you're playing back the video, run your volume up and down to make sure you one, get the two, on three, display two, one. that indicates the volume buttons are working. Now that I'm satisfied that everything on this iPod Touch works, I'm going to go ahead and remove my charging cable and power down the device until it completely shuts off. I'm going to have my part chart handy so I know where to place everything. I'm going to take my heat gun I'm going to go ahead and heat up the glass. Now, you don't want to heat this too long, but you don't want to heat it not enough. Uh, if you heat it too long, you're going to end up damaging the plastic bezel around the edge. As it is plastic, you could potentially melt it or damage it. So we're going to heat it up just enough to where our fingers uh, feel the, the heat enough to where you can't rest your finger on there. 
Uh, if you have a hair dryer, the same thing's going to apply because over long term, your hair dryer will also get just as hot. I'm going to go ahead and start heating my glass. I'm going to focus mainly at the bottom edge to the left and right of the home button. That's where the most amount of adhesive is. But the iPod Touch has adhesive all the way around, but very thin strips up the sides. And a very small area up at the top is most of the top is held in with a metal bracket, which we'll show once we get this device open. So I'm slowly moving the heat around to evenly heat the glass. And I'm going to do the same thing on the rear frame just to help me out and loosen that adhesive. But I'm going to focus more on the glass than I am the metal frame. Once I have this heated, I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply my suction cup and start to try to lift. At the same time, I'm going to take my plastic uh, pry tool and get between the bezel and the frame to get the screen lifted. Now, depending on how badly damaged the screen is, you may have to pick this off in little pieces. So now that I've got it between the plastic bezel and the glass, I'm going to run it along the edge and try to break some of that adhesive loose. If it starts cooling down, just give it another blast of hot air. So now I've got it opened up enough that I'm going to take my black nylon spudger, which is also included in my kit, and insert it in here as well. Then I'm going to run this up the edge, making sure that the notch in the kit doesn't get, the spudger doesn't get inserted any more than this little notch. And as I'm going, I'm sort of twisting this. I'm only going about three quarter of the height up. I don't want to go all the way up to the top. Now I'm going to slowly open it up to about a 70 to 80 degree angle. If you notice internally, you're going to see the Wi-Fi cable is attached to the glass in this upper corner. So we don't want to rip that. So I'm going to take my nylon spudger and come up along this edge here. just enough to break that tiny bit of adhesive loose and ensure that the Wi-Fi cable is not attached to the glass. Once I have all my adhesive loose, I'm going to go ahead and lift the screen now. The LCD connector is going to automatically become disconnected from the logic board. Now I have enough room here that I can lay the display open like this. If you notice here, you have this metal plate. This actually clips into the upper end of the frame up at the very top. Now any broken glass that may have dropped or stayed adhered to the bottom, let's go ahead and remove that. Get it cleaned up and out of the way so that we don't accidentally cut ourselves or allow any of these little glass shards to fall inside. If at all possible, you want to try to keep the adhesive down here at the bottom intact as best as possible. Now, the kit does come with new adhesive, but if you can use the original, that'd be advised as it's made and cut exactly how it should be. Now along the frame, you're going to find several screws holding this mid plate in. And you also have a bracket 
over here holding the rear facing camera into the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing the Phillips screws and placing each one on my part chart here or you could draw these out if you don't have a part chart and keep them as organized as possible as all the screws are different sizes and do go in specific locations. Okay, now that I have the eight screws holding the thermal plate in, I'm going to go ahead and start removing the thermal plate. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this, because the thermal plate has a wee bit of adhesive located over here by the volume buttons, and it's also adhesived on this end to the top of the loudspeaker underneath, is I'm going to give this just a quick blast of hot air. I'm not going to stay on it very long. I don't want to damage any of the internal components, but just enough to warm the uh, thermal plate up. Said so it's just a few seconds here. I'm going to take my plastic pry tool and get underneath the mid plate here. Make sure that you don't grab the speaker because you will break the speaker. There we go. So that end's broken free. And then we're going to go up here. Now, if you notice, the power flex cable runs right here. And we don't want to damage or cut that cable because in order to replace that, it requires soldering and it requires every component inside this to come out in order to replace the cable that runs along the top, comes down and over. So I'm gonna take my black nylon spudger that was included in my kit, and I'm gonna go in just over the power flex cable. Just like this, making sure I go in no further than the notch that's cut into this nylon spudger. And I'm going to, again, turn it just a quarter turn. To where it breaks free. Underneath the thermal plate is some copper shielding that runs underneath and over the top of the rear facing camera. So I'm going to take this and gently lift and pull this upward like this. But in order to fully disconnect it, I've got to take the top cap that holds the rear camera in place. So I'm going to take my plastic pry tool, come up underneath here, and pop this bracket up. There we go. Then I can now take the thermal plate and very gently peel the copper tape off the top of the rear facing camera and try to keep it intact as much as possible. Then I'll go ahead and set the thermal plate aside. Now the rear facing camera located right here, we're going to have to dislodge it from its socket. It's held in with a very tiny amount of double sided adhesive. When you do this, you only want to use the flat end of your nylon spudger and come in and just very gently lift the camera up. You don't want to use any metal or sharp tools because you'll cut the power ribbon, in which case will prompt it have to be replaced, which requires soldering.
Now that my rear camera is free from its socket, I'm going to go ahead and remove the three screws located at the very top of the logic board. There's one directly above the LCD connector here. There's one directly above the front facing camera. And then there's one all the way over here attaching the Wi-Fi cable. Now that those screws are removed, we're going to lift the logic board up to dislodge the front facing camera from the frame. It's held in with a little bit of uh, double-sided adhesive foam. Now on the edge over here you're going to see a, a cutout area. So I'm going to take the flat end of my spudger just enough to get the logic board up a little. I'm going to take my spudger here and run it internally underneath the front facing camera to dislodge it. The whole time I'm going to keep my finger along this edge over here to prevent myself from accidentally ripping the power and audio control flex cable. Now the digitizer, this cable here is held onto the logic board underneath with the, a zip socket and then it has this piece of copper tape wrapped around it for shielding and to also aid in holding it in place. So we're going to gently peel up this copper adhesive starting from the inside edge, laying it back and then we're going to take the other half and dislodge it and then take the flat end of the nylon spudger, insert it along the cable. Now we're only going in just to where you feel the nylon spudger stop. You do not want to force this in. Once it's in there, just go ahead and push slightly downward and the cable will become dislodged from the logic board and then you get slide it out as a singular piece. Now that the screen is off, there's a few other components that we have to remove to transfer to the new display assembly. One of them is going to be the home button, which is held in with a little bit of adhesive and a rubber gasket. So I'm going to take my nylon spudger, come in to break that seal, and then very gently lift it up. At the very top of the screen, you're going to find this metal bracket, which also has to be moved over to the new display assembly. So I'm going to come in here and try to loosen this up without forcing or bending this metal plate. Uh, if it's not coming off very easily, just take your hot air gun, give it a quick blast of hot air. along the very top edge. And take either the nylon spudger or the plastic pry tool. Get underneath and it should slide right off. Just like that. Now the top of the digitizer flex cable, you're going to see a piece of foam and that copper tape. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and transfer that from the old display assembly to the new display assembly so that it doesn't get lost. So I'm going to take the copper tape and carefully 
peel this off of the top of the digitizer. Try to keep it in one piece and immediately transfer it by lining up the creases directly to the new display assembly. And the foam pad on the end, I'm going to do the same thing. Now I can go ahead and set this the old display assembly aside as it's not going to be needed anymore. I'm going to take my home button and go ahead and set it back into the glass. On the home button gasket, you're going to see a flat edge and a rounded edge. The flat edge is going to line up with the bottom of the liquid crystal display right here. Let's go ahead and set that and press it back in place. Now we have a display assembly that's ready to be installed. Now we're going to look at the screen. Now, depending on when your kit was purchased, it may or may not have this metal bracket installed. Anything purchased within the, as of November 2014, this metal bracket is pre-installed. If it is not in pre-installed, you're going to take the original one slide it underneath the LCD connector to where the hole in the middle of the metal plate lines up with the ambient light hole on the glass. If you hold it up to a light, you'll be able to see that hole through the glass. It'll be a purplish color. Since this one already has the uh, bracket pre-installed, then I'm not going to worry about installing the bracket. Now to reconnect the digitizer to the logic board, we're going to take the cable and again put our finger over the power and audio control flex cable with our thumb outside the logic board and lift up to about a 30 degree angle. This will allow us to bring the cable inside and line it up. Now if you have small fingers, you can reach up underneath and reconnect this. I do not. So I'm going to use the nylon spudger underneath and see I'm sort of holding it against the spudger. This way I can control the cable and I can feel it line up and then press at the top and connect the two together. This may take several times. When it's in place, you'll feel it double snap. If you can, you can take the front facing camera and roll it out of the way to give you a little bit more room to get up in there. So I'm going to press the nylon spudger upward and the logic board downward to connect the two into place. Now that they're lined up and I press the two together, I felt it click and it is connected. I'm going to take the copper tape on the inside and go ahead and roll it up on the connector. And I'm going to take the copper tape and wrap it back around, pulling it slightly tight and folding it back into place. If you remove the front facing camera out of the way, go ahead and roll it back into place. And then you're going to take the logic board and set it back down into the frame. You may have to guide the front camera in and then it'll sit nice and flat. And go ahead and set the rear facing camera into its socket. And going by our chart, we're going to go ahead and install the screw above the LCD connector first. Then we're going to take the screw above the front facing camera, put it back in. And then the screw that goes to 
the Wi-Fi cable, put it back into place. The next step is to go ahead and test out your screen before we put the thermal plate in. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and wrap this around, connect the LCD to the logic board. You'll feel it snap. Go ahead and set the screen down, turn on the power button, and you should get an Apple logo. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this outer protector so that I can fully test the screen. So now that it's booted up, I'm going to want to make sure that the digitizer works by sliding to open. I'm going to grab an icon till they get jiggly and then run that icon slowly around the entire screen. If the icon drops, that could indicate a bad connection or a tear or damage to the digitizer. Now that I'm satisfied that the digitizer is fully connected, the video and the digitizer works. I'm going to go ahead and power this down and continue with the repair. So I'm going to lift my screen back up and disconnect the LCD. I'm going to take the thermal plate the ends of the thermal plate on the right side have these tabs that slide up under the bezel. So you have to get those in at about a 45 degree angle and then drop it down into place. Just like that. Go ahead and fold the copper tape back down onto the rear facing camera. And then we will reinsert the eight screws that hold the thermal plate and logic board into the frame itself. Now that the thermal plate is screwed back in, we're going to lock the rear facing camera in by taking the metal bracket and it has a notch on the end that slides underneath the bezel and then on the opposite end, it has a little latch that locks into place. I'm going to take this and go underneath at a 45 degree angle, lay it down, and then firmly press it till I feel it click and lock. Okay, now that the screen is attached, we're going to go ahead and replace the adhesive that was removed. Now the adhesive comes in uh, different types. Uh, so yours may not look exactly like this, but it's the same principle on all of them. So in this here, I'm going to go ahead and use tweezers just to aid me in aligning it. I'm going to take the adhesive and line it up over the metal plate. Then I'm going to take the screen and lay it forward and lay the adhesive that goes over the very top. Line up the corners and drop it into place. Now 
Then I'm going to lay the screen back open, remove the adhesive backing, and do the same over the top portion. Now on the back of the display assembly for the iPod Touch 4th is you're going to find this anti-static protective coating. Just go ahead and very carefully remove that and it should reveal a mirrored edge. Now I'm going to take the LCD and reconnect it to the logic board. by slightly pulling the cable forward, lining it up. And you'll feel it snap into place. Now, the digitizer cable, you're gonna wanna make sure that it folds like a Z. So you're gonna lay it down, fold it over on top of itself, and then bring it this way. Now the very top, you're going to see the metal tabs that go underneath the bezel. So we're going to take this and gently move it forward, slide it under that bezel, and then lay it down into place like so. And then go ahead and run your fingers along to make sure it lays down inside the bezel. And then we'll go ahead and power it back on, make sure everything is functional. So now that it's booted back up, I'm going to go ahead and retest, test my digitizer, slide to unlock, same thing, grab an icon, move it all over, make sure the icon doesn't drop, test my home button, double click, the screen should pop up. I'm going to open the cameras, make sure both the front and the rear camera works and then again record another video to test that the microphone test one two three three two one play that video back make sure the volume up volume down both work press the power make sure it sleeps and lastly, we're going to reconnect it to the charger. One, two, three, three, and make sure that we get the battery is charging. Once you're satisfied that everything's working, go ahead and power the device back down. Now to really get a good bond between the adhesive is you're going to very gently warm up the glass, lay it on its face, and put about five pounds of something on there like a bag of flour or a couple of books and let it sit for a couple of hours. So I'm just warming it up. And I'm going to lay it over and apply pressure onto this by adding some weight. 
and let it sit for a couple hours. Once that's done, go ahead and remove your weight and your iPod is as good as new. Thanks for watching the iPod Touch 4th Generation Display Assembly video. I'd also like to give a shout out to Melissa, she's one of our technicians. And remember, you go to iCrack.com for all your iPod, iPad, and iPhone needs.